Hello, hello! This is Panda, and today I want to talk about Redstone Wire. There are two disadvantages in the current implementation of Redstone Wire. Firstly, the order in which blocks around the wire get updated appears as random and is not even symmetric in regard to some of the most basic transformations, like change in position or computing environment. So, building and testing a Redstone contraption in one position on your computer does not mean that it will also work in another position on another computer. Secondly, the current implementation is quite inefficient, as it causes a lot of unnecessary block updates. For example, when turning on a 3 wide redstone line, there are 144 block updates. And if you think that's bad, try turning it off again. On turning off a 3 wide redstone line, over 1700 block updates happen. The way redstone wire works at the moment is relatively simple. When a wire gets updated, it checks which power level it receives from the blocks around it. If that is higher than its current own power level, it sets itself to this power level and causes block updates on the surrounding blocks in a position-dependent order. If it is lower than its current own power level, it decreases its own power level by 1 and causes block updates on the surrounding blocks in a position-dependent order. And finally, if it's the same power level already, it will just not change and not cause any further updates. The performance problem is caused by the wire going down one by one rather than evaluating its state first and then causing the needed updates only once. Of course I created a mod to fix these issues. Before I present it, I want to point out that this is not a simple one-line bug fix, but a complete rewrite of how Redstone updates. The fix was designed with three main goals in mind. Reduce unnecessary updates make the update order as logical as possible, and avoid breaking old behaviors. When we look at our 3 wide redstone line again, we can see that the total amount of block updates is now 66 for turning it on, and also 66 for turning it off. This is still more than the actually needed updates, but a lot of them are needed in order to keep old behavior regarding block update detectors and quasi-connectivity. And compared to the current implementation, it's a lot less. It becomes even more obvious when using a diamond shape out of just 60 redstone dust and turning it off and back on once per tick. That causes over 32,000 block updates each tick, which is enough to slow down the game on my computer. In comparison to that, in my mod the same setup just causes 682 block updates and the TPS can still keep up at around 16 of these diamond shapes. Reduce unnecessary updates? Check. So, is the update order logical? In the mod, the block updates are caused starting from the power source going out. So the closer something is along the wire to the power source, the sooner it will receive an update. For example, this allows building instant dropper lines using redstone wire and simple and fast monostable circuits and zero tick clocks. While I think the order is really logical that way, I'm going to leave this point unchecked and wait for your feedback. And now to the hardest point, avoiding to break old behavior. It's close to impossible to not break anything when doing a fundamental change like this. For example, builds that used to be positional either work in all positions or in none when using this mod. Also, in the mod, the entire wire changes before causing block updates, which is certainly a change in behavior. As I mentioned before, most of the updates in the mod are not needed from a logical view, but are just processed to keep old behaviors working. In fact, only the needed updates happen in a logical order, while the other ones are in a reverse order to them. This may sound weird and Yes, it is, but I found that it keeps most behaviors, even regarding zero tick generators, the same. I tested quite a few huge redstone builds with the mod, and so far all of them that were not positional before still worked. Still, I'm not going to put a check on this point either, and will wait for your feedback. A download link of the mod can be found in the video description, as well as links to the bug tracker. Also, a big thank you to Mary the Lapis Team, who made the resource pack used in this video. A link to her channel can be found in the description as well. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.